tight, bright, and priced just right. The celebrated Vortex Razor HD Tanks 42 binocular hits the sweet spot in delivering excellent optics in a nicely sized package for around $1,000. That price point is certainly more than you pay for an entry-level binocular, but it's half to one-third as expensive as class-leading European binoculars. And in most conditions, you'll hardly notice the difference in optical quality. What you get for that money is an excellent all-around roof prism binocular, optimized for hunting, but suitable for backyard birders, backpackers, and travelers. Good looks and excellent ergonomics. Razor HD binoculars from Vortex is a sex. The first thing you notice is its pleasing design, from the modern open bridge and oversized focus wheel, to its slim taper and its appealing gray-green armor. The barrels have thumb-grabbing dimples on their undersides, allowing users to keep the binocular balanced in most uses, facilitating one-hand operation. That ergonomic touch makes the Razer HD seem even lighter than its 25-ounce, 1.5-pound weight. That heft is worth noting, though, because it comes from a quality of glass that many entry-level and mid-price binoculars don't use. Vortex uses a variety of Japanese extra-low dispersion glass in the Razer HD that often weighs more, lens for lens, than other classes of glass. The APO lens system features a number of color and image correcting lens elements. All lenses are fully multi-coated, and the Razer HD uses Vortex's premium XR Plus coatings on the objective and occupant. Those coatings help resist scratching, repel dust and moisture, reduce glare, and boost color rendition across the spectrum though I noticed the binocular has a bit of a bluish tint, what the Razer HD binocular does best. There is a tendency among optics designers to overbuild their flagship models. Think of those 3-pound Tanks 42 models like the original Swarovski SLC and early Lake Etrina bids. While overbuilt is good to some extent, the best hunting binoculars are light and compact. And that's also the best attribute of the Vortex. It is absolutely portable, capable of sliding in jacket pockets, or when attached to a binocular harness, it fits in pouches size for H32 models. It's the rare Tanks 42 that can do that, which makes this one of the best compact binoculars. But the Razer HD doesn't give up any optical horsepower inside the trim frame. It has a wonderfully wide field of view, and the big ocular lenses deliver ample light with the 4.2 exit pupil. The binocular's portability is matched by its durability, with one notable exception that we'll discuss below. The armor is reasonably thick and rugged, and the lens coatings resist dust and scratches. The oversized focus wheel is positive and turns with both precision and authority. Similarly, the right barrel dock returns easily enough to make quick adjustments, but is tight enough to prevent being bumped out of focus. A locking collet on the diopter would be a great addition to ensure that it doesn't move when being deployed or stored in a chest harness. Vortex Razor HD in the field, I've toted this binocular on several hunts, and recently took it on a week-long backpacking trip on the California side of the Sierra Nevadas above Lake Tahoe where it was invaluable for picking out distant trail markers and alpine cairns that guided me far above timberline. It was also fun to look at pikas and chipmunks up close their expressive faces filling the frame of the binocular. Because the Razer HD focuses as close as 6 feet, it works as a macro lens just as well as it works to magnify distance. Again, the portability was a key asset in my choice of optic. I was counting ounces in my choices of food, fishing gear, clothes, and water. But this little binocular delivers far more optical performance than its tight chassis indicates. What the Vortex Razor HD does work. Above, I promised more details about the biggest shortcoming of these otherwise good binoculars. It's the rubber eyecup gaskets, the small cushion that keeps the metal eyecup from cutting your brow when you bring the binocular into your face. The rubber rims have a tendency to come off with very little encouragement. I found myself having to stuff the gaskets back into the narrow races where they belong. But after a few times of removing the binocular from the chest harness, the rims would work themselves loose again. I hope you found this video helpful. It's my pleasure if you are helped a little at least. If you have anything to query for, please comment us below. Thank you for watching this video.